So just get into your sitting bones. Connect down as if you're standing, but in a seated position. So the sitting bones are what our feet would be when we're standing up. So hips and shoulders line up, crown to the ceiling, shoulders back and down, shoulder blades towards your waist, and the ribs in and up to keep that core activated but not clenched. And then just focus inward your yoga frame of reference and just allow your awareness to be internal. And then we're creatures of habit, so we always put the same leg in front or on top, so switch the legs around so they're going the opposite direction. It may feel a little weird, but that's okay. We'll do both sides sooner or later. We're gonna start with just kind of a hip warm up because we're gonna be focusing mostly on the hips and lower body today. So hands can clasp around your knees, but don't really clench them. And then pull your ribs a little bit back and round forward and kind of bring your forehead face down toward the floor. And then roll over to one side and then inhaling, look up toward the ceiling, lifting your heart. And then as you begin exhaling to the opposite side and coming back around to the front. And just a few times around that way. And kind of keep the focus, though, in the hips and pelvis as you go around that range of motion. Breathing in at the back, exhaling at the front. And you can go as fast or as slow as you want on this warm-up for your lower body and hip and pelvic area. And then the next time you come around to the front, just pause there a moment. And then we're going to do the same thing the other way. So rolling to the opposite side, and again, lifting your heart, coming around, exhaling to the front. And just continue through that range of motion, breathing, moving your body, trying to keep that pelvis as your at least mental focus, even if you feel like you're coming a little bit higher as you go through that range of motion. And then again, after a few circuits on that direction, come back to the center at the front and inhale and sit back up. Now we're gonna warm up the spine. So ribs back, shoulders forward. And then inhaling, heart high, and chest toward the ceiling, head back. And just exhaling into the forward bend. Inhaling, lifting the heart, backward bend, upper body. And if you'll move your speaker, that would help because I'm getting feedback in my microphone. And then again, coming back to the center, just take a moment there. Put one hand down, opposite arm out. Bring the palm toward the ceiling and over your shoulder and slide over to the side for that side stretch. Keep the hip down that you're leaning away from and bring the arm by your ear and reach out through your fingertips and the top of your head. And you can rotate your upper body a little bit to look up toward that hand to make sure you're not leaning forward. And then inhale and slide up. Exhale your arm down. And switch your legs around. And we'll go the other way. So opposite hand down, arm out at shoulder level, palm toward the ceiling, arm over your shoulder. Stretch it up and slide over into that side stretch so those ribs come apart. See if you can breathe into that side of your body. Bring your arm by your ear, head reaching toward your hand, and the hip you're leaning away from, sinking down. So that whole side gets maximum stretch, as much as you want anyway. And then again, inhale back up and exhale your arm to your side. So feel your ribs a little bit more open, your spine laterally stimulated. And we'll do our twist warm up next. 
So take one hand to the opposite knee, other arm out in front shoulder level. Stretch from your sitting bones up so those spine bones separate for twisting. And exhale, follow the hand around behind you. Hand to the mat close to your body. Stretch up through your spine. And then exhaling, move your hips, ribs, and shoulder into the twist, not just your neck. If you love a twist, you can push a little with that hand on the knee and leverage a little further into it, or not, your choice. But keep the whole body moving, not just part. And then inhaling, bring the hand behind to shoulder level. Exhale, follow it around to the center and release. And of course, switch your legs and we'll twist the opposite way. So other hand to the knee, arm out at shoulder level, sitting bones down, stretch up, and exhale all the way around into your twist. Hand to the floor behind you, stretch up through the spine, exhale, deepen your twist. So turn your whole body as much or as little as you'd like into the twist this time. And again, just keep moving into it as you exhale, relax. And when you're ready to release, the hand comes up and just follow it to the center and release. And then we'll lift the knees and bring the legs out in front into staff position. So just situate into your sitting bones, lengthen up through your spine. You can have your hands at your sides or in your lap. We're not going to put any pressure in the shoulders though. So heels press out, toes pull back when you're in staff position. Knees are always up to the ceiling and the toes also up toward the ceiling. So lengthen up through the spine, keep those ribs in and up for that core for support for your lower back. We're gonna warm up the hips a little bit, just gently. So bring one knee, bend one knee and bring that foot up to your upper thigh and let that knee come toward the floor. Now, if it's really tight this morning, which it may be because mornings are tighter, you can take this leg in front over to the side, and that will give you a little bit more of that pelvic tilt coming into the front of your sitting bones, and let this knee come a little bit more easily toward the mat. You can add the weight of your hand, but don't really give it a lot of pressure to that knee as you let that hip get just warmed up gently. So breathe, relax. When it relaxes, things stretch more and your knee will go down further toward the floor. If you want to keep that leg in front, but you need a little bit more pelvic tilt, you can put a pad behind you and again, come into the front of the sitting bones rather than back of them. And again, just let that leg relax, knee coming toward the floor as much or as little as it needs to this morning and just do what's right for your body. And then we're going to bring the foot up and either hold on to your foot and your knee or wrap your arms around and pull that leg in, which will be more intense on that outside of your hip, hip rotator. And then we're going to move it back and forth. So keep the crown up to the ceiling, shoulders down as you just gently go back and forth, letting this hip rotator get a little bit more lubricated because we're going to be a little intense in that hip this morning. So again, just allow that to happen. Stay there if that's enough. Or if you like it more intense, lift your leg higher or pull it in closer and you'll feel it more in that hip area. And again, just relax as you do it. Let it warm up and release that leg back into staff position. Again, take a moment, feel that side. And notice that it's different, so we've got to balance the body. So bring your other foot up and allow that knee to come down. Again, depending on your needs, you can bring the leg out to the side. Now remember, if you do, the knee and the toes still are up on that leg that you bring to the side. Or you can keep it at the front and pad behind you for that pelvic tilt opening. Or you can just leave it and see what happens. And you may notice that one side is easier than the other. That's not unusual, especially in the hips. We tend to be 
using one side differently than the other when we get into cars and into chairs and do things at our desks. So we tend to have a little bit more tightness in one side than the other. So just kind of observe which side of your body that might be. And again, just the weight of your hand, not pressure pushing down, just allowing it to happen. This is one of your multitasking watching TV positions. You can sit on the floor watching TV and do your yoga practice working at your hips. It's highly recommended. And then again, when we're ready, bring that foot up, wrap it around or hold on and move that hip joint around side to side for a little more flexibility in that hip rotator. Breathe. Make sure you're not leaning forward or backwards or to the side. Always everything. Still knee up and toes up on your front foot and crown to the ceiling always. And after you've warmed it up a little bit, if you're still needing more intensity for some reason, higher and closer makes it more intense. Your choice, what you do. And then when you're ready to release that, just exhale that leg back out into staff position. Just take a moment feeling how your hips are, a little bit more warm and lubricated, hopefully. And then bring your one foot up to your inner thigh and allow yourself to sink back into both sitting bones evenly. And then hands at your sides, palms up, and bring your arms over your shoulders. And then exhale, hands to your shoulders. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale to your shoulders. Now from your sitting bones all the way up on the inhalation, and then pivot at that hip joint, bring your chest and chin toward your leg, and your hand toward your foot or the floor or your shin. And again, knee up toward the ceiling, toes up toward the ceiling. Just let your chest and chin come forward, giving the back of the leg a little bit more stretch. And then reach forward, bring your arms and pivot back up. Release your arms, lift your knee, and back into staff. Just feel that leg that we stretched a little bit. And we're going to do the opposite side. So the other foot comes in. Adjust on your sitting bones so they're both evenly connected. And again, hands at your sides and over your shoulders. And again, stretch up, breathing in. And exhale, hands to your shoulders. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale and release. One more stretch up. And pivot. So chin and chest toward your leg, hand toward your foot, and sitting bones back. So just keep bringing your chest, chin toward your leg, letting that kneecap go toward your thigh for a little bit more release through the hamstring on the back of your leg. And then arms by your ear, and pivoting back up. Exhale, and knee up and back out. So again, just readjust into your sitting bones and allow your body back into staff position. Take a moment just feeling the legs, the hips, and we're going to do diving dolphin. So bring one foot up to your inner thigh, and again, knee out to the side. You can adjust again on your sitting bones. And we're going to bend the other knee and bring that heel back next to your hip. And then sink down into that hip as much as possible, sitting bone toward the floor. If you need padding under that, you can put padding under it so that you feel a little bit more secure. So ribs in and up. Stretch your spine apart. And we're going to exhale and turn to that first knee you bend. Hands on either side of the leg or on the leg itself. And we're going to pull the ribs back and exhale, tucking your chin in and diving your forehead down toward the knee. And then rotate your face forward and up toward the ceiling, lifting your heart toward the sky, coming up, breathing in. 
So sinking back down, exhaling, rounding forward, diving under the water, you're the dolphin. Inhaling, coming up to the sun and the sky, just like those playful leaping dolphins along the seashore. Exhaling, diving down, inhaling, coming up, feeling your hips, just kind of sinking those sitting bones as much toward the floor as you go through your range of motion. And noticing that you're working your spine and your breath, as well as the hips and the whole body. Now one more dive under, exhaling down, inhaling back to the top. And as you get all the way up, exhale and turn back to the center. Re-sink into that hip. Bring the leg out, the other leg up and out and you're back in staff position. So feel your body a little bit more energized through the spine, through the pelvis. And of course, we're gonna balance and do the other side. So foot comes up into that inner thigh, readjust. The other leg wraps around, heel near your hip. Sink into that hip again on the side that you stuck in bent. And then lengthen from your sitting bones all the way up. So you can twist and exhale into that twist to the first knee. Hands on the floor or the leg, your choice. Exhale, ribs back, diving under, chin tucked, forehead toward the knee. Rotate the face forward and up as you lift your heart to the sun and the sky, coming up and then exhaling, diving down. So you're going under the water on the exhales. You're coming up to the sun and the sky on the inhalation. And again, just sinking and rising through that range of motion, letting your spine work, your breath work with it, and your hips and pelvis sink down into that surface beneath you ocean. Breathing, lengthening your spine, Filling your lungs completely and exhaling totally as you go through your diving dolphin motion. And then as you dive this time, rotate up, inhaling to the top. At the top, pause, exhale, and return again to the center. And bring the legs back out into staff position. So take a moment, you want to feel those hips and pelvis a little bit more warmed up, spine lengthening, breath full and deep. And just notice how that lower body in particular got a little bit more stimulated, which is good because we're going to do something a little bit intense. Cow's head pose. So for this one, you're going to bend one knee and bring the heel of that leg over near your opposite hip. So as much as possible, have that knee straight out in front. And then we're gonna take the other knee and put it as much right on top as possible and wrap that other foot around and try to get the heels across from each other as much as you can, near the hips or not. If you're very flexible in your hips, your knees may be right near each other. If you're like me, a little bit tighter, they may be quite a bit apart. Don't worry about it. Either way works. This is not a comfortable position for most people, so don't worry if it's not for you. It's pretty intense through those hip rotators. That's why we wanted to warm that up a little bit. And then allow your sitting bones to sink down and the crown to reach toward the ceiling. And then we're going to release that back to the center. And just feel those hips. And of course, we're gonna balance the body and do the other side. So bend that opposite knee, bring the heel back near your hip and sink into it as much as you can. Other knee on top, and again, try to stack them one on top of each other as much as you can, and sink into both sitting bones as evenly as you can. Just take a moment there, breathing and relaxing, allowing that 
top knee to come as far down toward the other knee as it wants to. Take a moment, breathing, just relax. And then hands down and knees unbending and coming back into your seated position, staff. Now we're gonna warm up the shoulders a little bit. So bring your arms out to the sides and then turn one palm up and the other one palm down. Put your thumbs into the middle of your palm and wrap your fingers just gently around the thumb. And then the hand that's palm up, turn it palm down while you turn the hand that was palm down up. So you're rotating those arms and hands one at a time up and down. See if you can keep your arms right at shoulder level as you do that. And just go through that range of motion as much or as little as feels good. And then kind of make it a little bit more motion all the way up through the whole arm, getting the shoulder a little bit more. So bringing the shoulder forward as the palm hand goes down and getting it up as it goes up. Breathing. And then see if you can get that rotation all the way into the middle of your spine and the middle of your back. And then just let that release. And turn both palms up, fingers out, palms down, and to the mat. Now, we're going to use what we just did to warm up the shoulders with what we did to warm up the hips and go into the full cow's head pose. So we're going to take, again, one knee to the front, heel over by your hip, and then the other one on top. So knees stacked as much right on top of each other as possible, feet right across from each other. And then bring your arms out, turn the palms to the ceiling and over your shoulders. And we're gonna bend one elbow and bring the hand down into the middle of your back and pull that elbow in toward your head. So that as you're doing that, that hand is coming down into the middle of your back behind you. And you can use your other hand to pull that elbow so that that hand slides down further into the middle of your back. And then if that's working for you, you can take that hand that you were pushing on the elbow and see if you can clasp your hands behind you. If not, you can just grab your shirt and work your hands toward each other. And if you have a strap, you can also use a strap. So the elbows come in toward the spine so that one in the air comes in, the other one below comes in, and then stretch them away from each other. And as you work your shoulders like that, you will notice that your hips maybe are relaxing a little bit more. Now make sure your head is pushing back into that arm in the air so that you're not rounding forward. You want your spine nice and straight for this, those sitting bones connecting as much as possible. So again, elbows stretching away and in toward the spine, hips sinking toward the floor, knee coming you know, down toward the other floor, other knee as much as possible. And then when you are maximizing as much as you feel like it's good, release that and feel your shoulders and arms again. And release your legs as well. And notice that maybe it was a little bit easier on those legs and hips after you started working the arms. Some people call this the torture position. It's a little bit challenging for both the arms and the legs for most people. So if you feel that way, don't worry, you're in the majority. So we're going to, of course, balance the body because we don't want to end this session lopsided. So bend your knee, opposite knee, heel near your hips. And the other knee comes on top, Heels right across from each other as much as possible. Sink into your sitting bones as comfortably as you can. And again, just take a moment there to situate. Make sure that everything is as comfortable as possible. Knees stacked and heels across. Hands at your sides, out, palms up, and over your shoulders. Bend that opposite elbow, 
pull it in, get that hand coming down into the middle of your back. And again, you can keep pulling that elbow and allowing that shoulder to open a little bit more. Bring the other hand around and see if you can clasp on this side. Some people clasp on one side, some on the opposite side, and some do both and some do neither. So just see what your body is willing to do. Again, clasp your shirt or your strap if that's necessary for your body. Keep the head pushing back so you're not rounding forward. Keep the elbow in the air pulling in and the one down below pulling in as much as possible as well. So again, elbows stretching away, shoulders relaxing, and hips releasing as much po as possible toward the floor. Take a breath, just relax, maximize as much as you feel is right for your body this morning. Take another breath. And as you exhale, release those arms and feel your shoulders one more time. And again, releasing your legs coming back into staff. Take a moment there, close your eyes, just feel your shoulders, feel your hips and pelvis and legs, and just notice that you've really worked that whole body as you were in cow head pose. So take a breath, exhale tension. And then we're gonna pull one knee in, Wrap your arms around and allow your sitting bones to evenly sink. Okay, this one's a little tricky. This is going to work your shoulders a little bit more for our twist. So bring your arm inside that knee and pull your arm back around toward your hip. And then take your other hand and see if you can clasp or just pull it toward your hip as much as possible. And then pull the knee into your arm, and as you exhale, turn away from the knee and into the twist. So this will open up that shoulder again a little bit more. You can have your hands on your leg or your back if that's more comfortable for you, rather than clasping, or if you've got a strap or something that you can clasp onto in your clothing, you can work those hands toward each other if they don't quite reach. Keep the knee pulling in, the whole spine stretching up, and exhaling hips, ribs, and shoulder into the twist, not just your head. And then releasing that, turning back to the center, and bringing that leg back out straight, reconnecting into your sitting bones. So feel your shoulders. Notice how that is working in your body now. Take a moment to breathe. And of course, we're going to twist to the opposite side as well. So we're going to bend the other knee and pull that leg in. Wrap your arms around and pull it in. Get nice and comfortable into both sitting bones, foot flat on the floor. And then the arm comes inside the knee and wrap that hand back toward your hip. The other hand comes up and around, clasp if you can, or wherever you can. And then pull the knee and shoulder into each other, lengthen up through the spine, get room to twist, and exhale, turning into the whole twist. Breathing. Sinking into your sitting bones, lengthening up through the crown, pulling the knee and shoulder into each other on that front leg, and clasping your hands or not, as your body is willing to do. Take a breath, just exhale and deepen. And again, as much twist or as little twist as you'd like, as much shoulder work in this one as you would like as well. And then releasing your hands. Bring it back around to the center, unwrapping, unwinding, and bringing that leg back out into the staff. Feel your shoulders, feel your spine, notice your breath, exhale tension. And then it's time with your feet at the end of the mat to roll onto your back and get ready for relaxation. So again, taking a moment 
just allowing your body to relax down into that surface beneath you. Move back and forth, get, the, get that lower back sacrum area situated into the mat, shoulders and shoulder blades down. Arms out to T position for one final brief twist. Press your lower back down, bend your knees, heels in toward your hips. Lengthen through the sacrum, through the spine, whole spine pressing down and lift your feet off the floor, knees right above your hips. Exhaling, roll the knees to the side, turning your head toward that opposite side. Our usual bent knee twist, just for a final twist before our relaxation. Maximize or minimize, it's your choice, remember, on the twist. You can bring your toes down to the floor if you need some support, or put some support under your knees. Shoulders down, shoulder blades down, middle back in your twist. Head turning for your neck and shoulder in the twist. Take a moment and breathe. And then on your next exhalation, bring your heels toward your hips and roll onto your back. Feel the twist energy through that pelvic area, lower back, spiraling up into your meditative connection. And then exhaling, knees to the opposite side head turning behind you. And again, maximize your twist on this side, those knees to the floor or toward your elbow a little bit more for that lower back twist. Shoulders and shoulder blades down, middle back, and head turning for your neck and shoulder. Maximize or minimize, remember twists are personal, just like all of the yoga. Do what's right for your body. Deep breath. Just relax. Allow your twist, don't force it. And when you're ready to release, exhaling, heels toward your hips, roll onto your back and bring your feet to the floor. Again, allow your awareness to turn inward. Feel the spine. Notice that stimulation in the middle of your skull, getting your meditative center ready for relaxation. Hands near your hips, palms up, lengthen out through your feet into corpse position. If you need to keep your knees bent, you can pad under it for that lower back support or knees toward each other a little bit with them bent. Your choice. Just allow your body to sink into that surface beneath you, adjusting as you need to, letting your body grow heavy and sink into the surface beneath you. Breathing deep, relaxing, allowing everything to release. Deep breaths, tension out. And just feel as if you're at the ocean, sinking into that warm, soft sand, letting your body go, allowing your mind to drift in that vacation state of mind. No need to remember the past or anticipate the future. Just let your mind drift as easily as the waves flowing in and out. Breathe deep. Let everything go. And just be in your vacation state of being. And then, of course, just allow yourself to stay in your relaxed position as long as you would like. 
If you need to get up for the rest of your day, press your lower back down, bend your knees, draw your heels in, drawing energy and awareness back to your body as you get ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation. So stretch your body, give yourself that good hug whenever you're ready to release. Roll over to the side and sit back up, getting ready for the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me.